In the previous videos, we have seen vendor master and material master. And we said that not all vendors supply all the materials. So some vendors supply some materials and some other vendors supply other materials. So where is the relationship between the vendor and material documented? So if I want to know who can supply whole wheat flour, I need to be able to understand that it's this vendor and maybe this vendor. Right? I need that information handy. And how much is it going to cost for this vendor versus this vendor? So the relationship between materials and vendors is created in what's called as a purchasing info record or info record for short. So what kind of data is available in an info record? Let's go create one. So go back. So where is the info record? So we go to logistics, material management, purchasing, and then go to master data, go to info record, and there you have ME11, ME11, 12, 13. So go to create mode, ME11, put your vendor 4003 or 4001, and don't worry about entering the plant for now. I'll, I'll tell you why you need to enter a plant a little bit later. So select coffee beans, hit enter, and info record has also a bunch of screens. It has purchasing related data, general data, text, so on and so forth. Again, not all fields are important at this point. And for now, here are some of the important fields. Planned delivery time. This tells you how long it takes for this vendor to supply this material. This tells you how long it takes for the vendor to supply this material. Say this vendor takes Say this vendor takes 10 days to supply coffee beans. And then what's the typical standard quantity? Do we order 100 pounds? Do we order 10 pounds? Do we order 50 pounds? And then there could be a minimum order quantity. So some vendors don't take orders below a certain number, just for convenience reasons. So the minimum order quantity is say 20 pounds. So the standard order quantity is 100 and minimum order quantity is 20. And then we have delivery tolerances, important fields, but we're not going to touch about them now. But we're not going to touch them now. And the net price, what's the net price? $10 per pound. And a purchasing group of US1. Hit enter, hit enter, hit enter again. And here you can put in some text. Now, I'm not going to bother about this text now, but we're going to revisit this when we cover text determination in a later chapter. Enter and save. So for 4003 vendor for coffee beans, we have created a record. Let's go create a purchase order now. ME21N for vendor 4003. Put the material coffee beans and enter 10 pounds. In plant Chicago 1, first thing that you see, order quantity is below 20 pounds. Remember, we have entered the minimum order quantity as 20. So it's giving us a warning. So it's a warning, so you can hit enter and let it go away. All right, the next thing. Today's date is 22 April 2016. And what's the delivery date? May 2nd, 2016. So the system has added 10 days to April 22, and that comes to May 2nd, and set that as a delivery date, the date on which we can receive the goods. Why? Because we have set the number of days for delivery as 10 days for this vendor and material combination. So SAP takes the number of days from the info record, adds it to the current date, and puts them in the delivery date field. And $10, who specified that for this vendor and coffee beans, the price is $10? We did it when we created the purchase info record. So what's an info record? Info record, 
ties the material to the vendor. Why do you create info record? We create info record so that at any given point in time, we know what a vendor can supply or we also know who can supply a particular material. What are the details that go into it? So for a particular purchasing org, you can even narrow down it by plant if you want, but you don't need to. You specify how long it takes for the vendor to deliver that particular material. So you call them and ask them how long it takes. He says five days, you put five there. You put the purchase org and you also put the standard quantity. Standard quantity does not really have a lot of functionality, but minimum quantity can be used to give a warning if at all vendor requires us to procure in a certain minimum lot. And then you put a price, $2, $5, $10, whatever that material costs from that vendor. And if you look at the price, you see a two followed by a comma followed by five, right? So the intention there is 2.50, but it shows it as a comma. If you want to try it, go to M11. This time, let's do it for vendor 4001. Hit enter. And so if you, if you say two, so if you put in $2, the system automatically takes it as 2.00. But sometimes you could see it as 2 comma 00, like how it shows here. The reason is not all countries, unfortunately, specify decimals as with a dot. Some countries do it with a comma. So in order to account for that, SAP has specified a u something called as a user profile. So go back. No. Go to SU3. That's a transaction to, to check your own user profile. So it's dependent on the user. So the user is in Germany and his profile is set to German profile. He can have a comma in place of decimals. Hit enter. And this is my profile. And if I go to defaults, this specifies what my decimal notation is. So it's the same number behind the scenes. But when it shows that to me, if my decimal notation is comma with dots, it shows it like this. But if it if it's commas in place of dots, it shows it like this. So you can choose it either way you want. Try it with different possible combinations. So you'll understand what I mean by decimal notation. So that's user profile. Transaction code for this is SU3. So we have seen that the delivery date comes from here and we have seen that the price comes from here and we have seen that the price comes from here so let, let's look at the purchase order once again a purchase order has a header and then line items most of the data in the header comes from the vendor and most of the data in the line items come from material. Now this is very important. So anytime you look at a piece of data, say you saw this unit of measure and want to understand where this came from, follow the thumb rule. Anything from the header comes from the vendor. Anything in the line item, this is a line item field, it comes from the material master. The reason why I mentioned this is because you can't really understand the source of all the different fields in the purchase order. There are hundreds of fields in the purchase order and you can't possibly know what each field is and what's the source of it. Just remember the thumb rule, header from the vendor, line items from the material. So anytime in the future, if you have a question on a particular field, just check yourself. Is it in the header or line item? If it is in the header, this field should come from the vendor master. So go check the vendor. If it's a line item, go to the material master. 